Good morning, and welcome to chapel here at Harding Academy in what promises to be one of the more unique chapel experiences we've seen in our time here. Um, my name is Rusty Garner. I'm a teacher and a coach here at Harding Academy. For those of you that may be seeing this that don't know me, and I was asked to, to lead our peak of the week slash chapel service here this morning, and I'm really excited about this opportunity and glad to have you with us wherever it is that you may be this morning. It is certainly a strange experience to be giving this speech to an empty auditorium. I would normally have Senior Allen in the back giving me a thumbs up or Mr. Nesbitt on the left side giving me an amen, uh, Mr. Jones or Mr. Simmons laughing at a bad joke that I told, and so this morning we'll just go with it and we'll see how this uh, this experience plays out for us. I hope this is a, an important time of your day and that we say something that reaches you uh, that, is, that is from somebody above us. Uh, this is a tremendous time of change. And we were just thinking this morning that one month ago today, one month ago today, February the 25th, we had not yet begun to host the region basketball tournament at Rhodes Fieldhouse. That was a big undertaking here at our school. And, and to think back that that's been not even a month ago is really, really strange. And these are really strange times that we're living in. How we handle that change and our adaptability and what we do coming out of a time of change are, are some of the more important things we can talk about here this morning. As we watch this, this whole thing play out to this point, there were markers of the seriousness involved. Uh, all of a sudden... Well, there, there's a school somewhere that's going to let out, and this office is going to close. And then Chick-fil-A said, we're not going to let you inside our building. And you thought, well, Chick-fil-A cares about us. And then Waffle House said, we're not going to let you in our building. And you thought, well, this is pretty serious. And now we look at it from a place of school is out for the foreseeable future. So many activities that we never dreamed could or would be canceled have in fact been canceled. I think there's a real lesson there. Uh, so many things in our lives that we have made so important, we've, real, we've, we've been made to realize those things can go away. When those things go away, what are we left with? What happens next? So I think the, the point we want to make here this morning through the other points, is that a time of change presents you an opportunity for a time of reflection. And in that time of reflection, I'm going to do what any speech does, and I'm going to steal something good from somewhere else. So I'm also the girls' basketball coach here at Harding Academy. During our basketball season, once a week, we try to bring in an outside speaker or show our, our young women a video or something that really doesn't pertain to basketball. It pertains to Christianity. It pertains to character, relationships, life experiences. So there's more to the experience than basketball. One of our guest speakers this year was Coach Phil Berry, the head softball coach at Harding University and a true friend uh, and, a, and a great Christian man. Coach Berry said something to our team that I wrote down that day and I've kept with me since he talked to us. When you're in a time of change or you want change in your life, there are three things you need to ask yourself. What do I need to stop doing? What do I need to start doing? What do I need to keep doing? That's the direction that we're going to go here this morning as we talk about some of those things. What do we want to start doing? What do we want to stop doing? And what do we want to keep doing? Well, one thing I would like for us to start doing is to take a look at the things in our lives that, as it turns out, we can live without. As a coach, not having a, a softball team to coach today, and, and for this spring right now, is a very odd time in my life. Our baseball coaches, soccer coaches, track coaches, the robotics team, the theater students, all these people that, that had a spring just packed with activities. And now we're just happy to see each other on a webcam for 20 minutes somewhere, if we get to. There's a, a saying here that's it's crazy in the spring at Harding Academy. And yet the craziest spring at Harding Academy was the one where we didn't have any of the things. It's an interesting time. So what we are learning is that so many of the things that we pour our time and our energy and our worry and our attention into, while important to us in the moment, maybe not as important in the big picture as we probably give credit to. Um, but you see some of the things that you didn't think you could live without, you didn't think you would have to live without, 
you didn't think would ever go anywhere. And those things are gone now for a while. When we come back, some things will be different. We don't know what those things are yet. We don't know what next week looks like because last week was a different uh, projection than this week, and, and the projections keep changing. And, and for so many people, the uncertainty will lead you to anxiety and worry and consternation of, of all sorts. And as uh, me personally, I am a creature of habit and routine, and not having this habit and routine is, is very strange. The, the biggest part of my routine currently is that the Price is Right comes on at 10 o'clock. And I've seen more Price is Right in the last three weeks than I've seen in the last 10 years. That's part of my routine now. I didn't think that would be part of my routine uh, when the school year began, or even a month ago. But it is part of the routine now. What, can we, what do we want to start doing differently? I think we begin to see how much relationships matter how much the interactions with one another matter. When we're tired, and we all seem to be tired all the time, when we're tired, we just want to go home and stay home and rest for a day or two days or three days. Now, if the sun will come out for just a few minutes, there will be 40 people walking up and down your street. My wife and I go on walks every day when the sun comes out, and every street that we go on, People everywhere, dogs, kids playing in the yard. It, it's, it's a really interesting time, but you see people just want to get out of the house now that we've give, been given so much time in the house. If tomorrow everything went back to normal and we could be back to our lives, we'd wish we could go home for a while. So in this, this constant yearning for something else, we're being given something else. It's important that we do something positive with it. It's important that we don't let the anxiety and the fear of the change and uncertainty get the best of us. Uh, there's, there's a verse about that that we should mention. Psalm 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. And anxiety is great in so many of us right now. And I ask that in this time of reflection and this time of what do I want to start doing, what do I want to stop doing, what do I want to keep doing, we want to stop doing the things that take us further away from God. We want to start doing the things that show the love uh, of Jesus, and we want to keep doing the things that have brought the joy and the peace of God into our lives. I've seen this quote around many times. It's worth pointing out right now. It's from Mr. Rogers. And I think any quote from Mr. Rogers is a quote worth sharing. When I was a boy and would see scary things on the news, my mom would say, find the helpers. You will always find people helping. I think when you find helpers in times like the one that we're in now, these are people that have peace. These are people that have joy. These are people that know there's more to this life than what we're doing today. That there's a life beyond this. There's a God. That, that loves us. There's a God that cares for us. And that our job is his work. And if we're going to be helpers of the people, it's because we're servants of the king. And we need to get that right. So in this time, it, it is easy to look around and worry and to panic, but instead be a helper. For some of us, the most helpful thing you may do is stay home. That may be the most helpful thing you can do, and you feel like you're not doing anything. Maybe that's the best thing that you could do right now. If there's some way you can be of assistance, doesn't put anyone else at risk, sure. We need to do that. You should do that. I think it's biblical to be a helper. I think it's biblical to put others in front of yourself and to reach out for their needs, but only in a way that you can be Jesus to those people. Right now, there's, there's so much uncertainty but also what I have seen from our people, our students, our faculty, our administration is incredible adaptability. We're all learning so much. We're all learning things that we never thought we would be learning this semester. We're all learning how to do new things. Many of us teachers will probably be better teachers on the other side of this because of the lessons we've learned about 
communicating online with students and all the resources that are out there, things we might not have gotten a chance to do uh, in another situation. The students, you've had to be very, very adaptable in this, and as the college and, and professional job models move more online every day, that we had a small piece of time where all learning had to be online, whether you liked it or not, that may be to your benefit. Either way, we're all having to adapt right now. That's not a bad thing. That can be a truly great thing. Our lives call for adaptability. This was just a situation where the adaptability was thrown at you instead of something that you chose. And that's okay. That's okay. How do we respond to that? Where do we go from here? Those are the questions that, that we're all trying to figure out right now. And if we will just focus our eyes and focus our faith and not lose sight of what we're doing here, then this could be a moment of, of great growth uh, for us as people. As, as we go through the remainder of our school year, again, we don't know what the next week, months, we don't know what they look like. What we know is today. And today, we're called to be a child of God, and we're called to be followers of Christ. We know that. In a time of incredible upheaval and change, Let's look at what is eternally constant. And the constant is God as a father. The constant is Jesus as the son. The constant is our role as believers and our role as followers and our role as Christians. Those things are constant regardless of the world that we live in. There's a great chance for us to be distracted by all that's going on right now. And these are important things in the world. Please don't misunderstand me. But let's also not lose sight of the incredible opportunity we have here for growth, both in relationships with one another and relationships with God. Romans 15, 13 says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope the power of the Spirit joy, peace, and overflowing hope. Those are constants. And in a time of change, you want to find things that are constant. We're learning all sorts of new things. What outside walking looks like when you've been stuck in the house. Who those nice people are that live in your house that introduce themselves to you this week as your family. Maybe you haven't really had a chance to meet or see them recently because we're all so gone all the time. How to learn things online. How to live in a world where we don't know exactly what tomorrow looks like when we're all such creatures of habit. In the changes, find the constants. And the constant in this situation is God. The constant in all situations is God. Thank you for being with us this morning. Our principal, Mr. Steve Breedlove, has our prayer. Pray with me, please. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we give praise to your name in everything that we do. We praise you, we praise your Son. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing upon this nation, upon this world. We ask your blessing upon our leaders. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you guide them with wisdom. Wisdom that does not come from man, but comes from you. And we pray, dear Heavenly Father, that this virus may end quickly. And dear Heavenly Father, in this time of change, in this time of constant upheaval, we know that you are with us. For your Son told us that he is with us always, even until the end of the age. The things that are constant are your kingdom your grace, your forgiveness, and your love that you have for us. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for that. We thank you for the gifts that we have in this life. And the greatest gift of all was your Son, Jesus Christ, who came to this earth and paid our debt for sin. For dear Heavenly Father, it is in his name that we pray all things. Amen. I hope all of you have a great day.